So we don't have a whole ton of time here. So uh, I'm going to kind of get through the, the nitty gritty of this thing. Um, just realize before we get started, we are going to be talking about trading. You know, you're here at a training webinar expo. Trading does have its own form of risk involved. Never invest money. Sheena and Jerry, I got your response as well. Never invest money that you can't afford to lose. George, always trade with equity management in mind. So let me just kind of lay a little foundation. So everybody here that's logged in right now knows exactly what we're trying to accomplish here. This, this section is designed for really one thing and one thing only, and that's to help you determine whether or not you're looking to gain an advantage, um, a holistic data advantage. We're going to talk about what that, what that means. And just realize what I'm going to do today, because the shortened amount of time, I'm going to focus the energies on futures market because I have a couple examples there. I want you to realize that everything I'm going to go over, whether it be um, all the data, how we look at the data, it works in futures, stocks, ETFs, Forex. I know we got a lot of Forex traders in here. I'll ask a couple questions about that. Um, but realize I understand futures trading is not for everybody, and, and, and it may not be for you. That's fine, but I've learned also that successful people do what unsuccessful people cannot or are not willing to do. So I just kind of commend you on, on being here to find that out. And I, I love hearing from Matt. I've actually known Matt for the past. That guy's incredible. So if you get a chance to get around the guy, ask him some questions, uh, maybe get on the phone with him at some point in time, he's, he's going to be great. So um, let me just give you a real quick kind of a real quick snapshot of my background because um, my background is a little bit different than most of the people you might hear in this session today, primarily because I didn't grow up around trading at all. Um, I had friends that did it. I wasn't even remotely interested in it. I was an engineer, as you can see. I've got four engineering degrees, all that through my master's degree. Before then, I served in the United States Army. I was a non-commissioned officer. I did military intelligence, Kiran. Um, done a lot of different things, experienced a lot. So kind of the story was this. I, I had finished up the military, finished up my degrees, and then I was starting my engineering career. And I was about five or so years into my engineering career, and I just got to the point that you know, quite frankly, I didn't hate my job. I, I wasn't miserable, but I couldn't see myself doing it for the rest of my life. Um, you know, Matt was talking about leaving the corporate arena. Um, I did a little bit differently. I actually had an idea, something that I wanted to kind of do. And for like nights and weekends, the people would make fun of me because I was burning the candle to both ends of the stick. But uh, after about six years, I was the one making fun. Uh, I was able to walk away from my engineering career. My wife was a teacher. She walked away from that. And for the past several years, we've been entrepreneurs. And, and I love it. I love being able to have multiple things, multiple endeavors, control our own schedule. And I think that's what most people in today's day and age want. They just want to control their own time. So that's, that's my background. Now, what does it have to do with trading? Well, before then, I'd never traded. Um, I, I just, you know, I, a few years into that, a couple years in, I realized there's got, hey, thank you. I appreciate that, Jerry. I said, there's got to be it's smart to have two, three, four, five streams of income. Everybody in this webinar today, you're looking at that. Some of you have full-time jobs. Some of you are full-time traders. It's smart to have two, three, four, five streams of income. So several years back, I started looking into trading for the first time. I uh, started off my world. So all you Forex traders, I'm very familiar with that. I started off in the Forex realm, got trained by some incredible people, worked in that. And then as, as things go on, you know, you keep growing and changing and you realize, okay, I'm going to do a little bit of this. I'm going to add some stocks in there. I'm going to add some futures in there. And so everything I learned, I just want to realize that I got myself educated every time, found people that actually were doing it, learned skill sets, leveraged systems, and discovered effective tools. And that's basically when the futures came along, that's where the NOF team kind of came into the play. I'm going to tell you a quick little story about the NOF project so you guys understand a little bit about who you would potentially be dealing with. Uh, there's a challenge, okay? Um, there's a challenge when it comes to trading any market. And challenge is trying to understand uh, – what the institutions are doing. Uh, there are a handful of institutional traders and individuals that actually came out of that professional trading world that I was just talking about. And as they transition out, they realize they had a huge advantage over retail traders in like understanding the market, all the things that you and I as traders are aware of. And somebody just asked me a question about why futures. Just real, you'll realize this really quick, Ali. When we get into the data, you'll see that charts are charts are charts. It doesn't matter if we're looking at futures or stocks or forex. It's all the same, and we make decisions the exact same way. So you'll you'll just kind of see that, right? But leveraging today's ability to collect data, things have changed over the last few years. Lagging, you might want to write this down. Lagging price indicators are becoming a thing of the past. Ironically, so that's not a pun on words. Well, because there's data that's available that we can look at differently. 
And they decided to create a state-of-the-art ability and they created a tool and started teaching people how to look at the way the market the way, same way the institutions have been looking at it for years. Now, a good number of retail traders they found have a good understanding of market structure, footprints, order flow. However, and if you write this down, this thing called order flow sequence tracking was entirely missing. And that's what we're going to kind of talk about, like where are the orders? How can you actually identify where the trades are going based off of, we call it hunting and stalking the institutions. Because we all know, look, there's no secret in here that the institutions drive like 90% of the market. And our game as retail traders is, try to, is to try to identify that. Well, what if we could hunt and stalk them? What if we could know exactly what they're doing? Not with just old candlesticks of what happened 30 minutes ago and trend lines and things like that, but actually looking at real data. And that's where Project NOF was initiated, is to solve that dilemma. And their goal was this, their mission was this, to take the institutional mindset, combine it with the order flow sequence tracking. They, they created a tool to provide retail traders the ability to look at the, how the institutions look at the market for years. Okay, uh, William will have somebody answer that. They saw the potential. And that's basically and at the forefront of this is a gentleman right here, a gentleman named Troy Epperson. Uh, you may know him. You may have spoke with him in the past before. You may have seen him. As you continue to go throughout your journey and learning this, you're going to get to know the man very personally. He'll be helping you master the methodology. Why is that important? Look at the background. Look at the credibility. And I'll just say this statement. I don't have a lot of time here today, but I'm going to say this. If you ever look into any sort of system or trading or tool or anything, if those people or that company is not willing to actually do it with you, and, and tell you that they're going to coach you alongside and guide you and be there with you. Can I just throw it out there? Guys, go in the other direction. Is that, is that a fair statement? Look, don't – just watch out for stuff. And that's what I like about these guys is they're, they're, they'll, they'll sit there and they'll say, hey, we're going to do it with you. And that's why I started working with them a little bit because I realized the power of mentorship and having people with you walking you through every step of the way. Okay? So – that being said, I want to ask you guys and ladies a quick little survey here so I can see who I'm working with. On a scale of 1 to 10, if you were able to rate your trading knowledge, experience, and results with one number, how would you rate it? 1 means no little to nothing about it. 10 means that you're making a couple hundred thousand dollars a year. It's so easy. Why wouldn't everybody do it? That sort of thing. Just give me an honest answer. I do not need you to try to impress me. I just want to get a feel so I can know. If I need to slow down in some areas, speed up in some areas. Okay, uh, I got seven, Sebastian, I got you some threes, uh, a couple twos. Okay, uh, usually this is pretty normal. It's about 50-50. Okay, I got another two. Shukau, did I pronounce that right? Shukat, did I pronounce that right? Okay, Sheena says she's a zero. I, I'm, I'm, that's what, okay. And Sheena, for those of you who are zeros, just understand, we're going to start at the beginning. I'm not going to spend a lot of time going over some basics, although I will get the newer people up to speed. Okay, so that's good to know. And if you guys could also let me know what primarily – okay, Aaron says in the red. All right. What primarily are you guys trading and ladies trading? Just like are you trading primarily uh, stocks, futures, Forex? And then I'll just kind of give me a feel for what I need to mention throughout this session as we go through this. All right, Forex and futures. Uh, let's see. Uh, yes, Scott says, am I typing in the right place? Yeah, if you guys want to try give a test to make sure you know where to respond, just type in test or hi or can you see this, and, and it'll let you know this is live and I'm a real person out here. Uh, okay, good. Sheena's got you. Options, stocks, futures to Sebastian, Forex, Forex, couple, several Forex people, Jerry. Okay, so again, I want to remind you if you just logged in, the data and how we look at it and how we make decisions off the data and how the data is structured, it is the same for all markets, okay? So you don't have to worry about, but for those of you that are not familiar with futures, let me do like a three minute crash course so you know, at least understand the lingo because when I get over to the charts, a chart is a chart is a chart. You know, they say ticks instead of pips, but here's what we're doing. When you're trading the futures market, what you're basically doing is you're, you're, you're buying and selling standardized contracts. That's the key that are used for trading future goods at a future certain date and price. Now, if I were a, it, I, I remember when I was looking into this, I had people that would just confuse the heck out of it. Let me make this very, very simple, okay? Everything from commodities, metals, energies, currencies even, but it's trading contracts. I'll explain what I mean here. And this is a, this will make it make a whole lot of sense. Because I remember when I was a Forex trader trying to look into this, it just didn't make sense. But listen to this. Imagine if you just moved into a house 
and you needed internet service and you had somebody come knock on your door and they provided, they, they offered you up a package and they said, okay, for $50 a month, you can get this internet service, high speed internet service, and we'll give it to you for an entire year. But in order for you to get the $50 a month, you have to sign this contract and that's going to kind of lock you in. So ultimately $50 a month times 12 months, you paid $600 for that contract and you got internet service at your house. Now, imagine if you had the ability to, well, let's just say the rest of the neighborhood, the price of internet service went way up. Yours is still at 50 and your neighbor's paying $100. Imagine if you could take that contract. Now, you can't actually do this, but this is kind of what you're doing in your trade and futures market. Imagine if you could take that contract, walk across the street, and then sell it to him or her for maybe $80. Well, you make a $30 profit per month. He saves $20. You're both happy. That's essentially what you're doing when you're trading futures because it's the contract. It's the contract, not the actual product itself that can be bought and sold in the futures market. So there's always another investor on the other side of your trade. There's a whole heck of a lot of leverage in it. And as the, as the supply and demand of these goods rise and fall, uh, we're making money based off of our knowledge of those movements. So it's, 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 again, it's the same types of things. And I don't have time. I'm not here to sell you on why futures is good. But if you are looking for something that's highly leveraged, if you're looking for something that's a little bit more regulated, um, a lot of times people that trade Forex, there's some big spikes. That was one of my challenges with it. I didn't like the spikes. Um, very efficient and very fair. Again, I'm not going to spend a lot of time going over this. Uh, if you got questions about it, feel free. Okay? Cool. All right. So, yes. So, Ali, definitely we'll, stop, we'll talk about – it'll cover stocks as well. So, let me go over to the market and just kind of show you guys what I mean when I'm saying charts or charts or charts. Trading is trading is trading for, for the most part when it comes to looking at it here. Okay, this is a futures chart. Okay, uh, many of you are very familiar with this, whether you trade stocks, futures, forex, doesn't matter. Okay, it all kind of looks the same. These are called Japanese candlesticks. I'm going to assume for the time being that you're all familiar with that. If you're actually, if you're not, um, like Sheena, these are Japanese candlesticks. Okay, they represent on this chart 30 minutes of time. So in this 30 minute time frame, this red one, the market at the beginning of that 30 minutes was at this point. Throughout the next 30 minutes, it rallied up, formed a high. This is called a wick. Dip down, formed a low. Closed out right there. Next 30 minutes, open, dip, rally, close, open, dip, all the way up to the live market. Now, obviously, it's closed today. It's Saturday. But the one thing, so when you're looking at this and you trade futures, or you trade stocks, you trade Forex, it kind of all looks the same. But the thing right up here says ES0319. This is what's called a symbol. Like when I was trading Forex, it was GBP versus USD, the great British pound versus the US dollar. And it was very obvious. But in futures, there's just a whole bunch of like symbols. And what I found is that most futures traders just trade. This is one of the good things about it. They usually just trade one or two or three things that they like. And a lot of traders trade the ES, so the, which is the S&P 500 mini. Now, when you get started, whether, you know, whether the NOF team is teaching you this or somebody else is teaching this stuff, as you get started and start to go through this, you'll realize, oh, I've got a little advertisement. I love that stuff. Okay. That if I go in, there's, there's just all kinds of websites out that you can go, well, what is available to trade? You know, grains, indices, meats, metals, financials, you name it. It's all in there. So if I wanted to trade 10-year treasury notes, the symbol is TN. And over here, the side, it gives you like how much it takes to get into a trade, how much you'd make off of each tick. And all that stuff is just kind of a summary of some of the more uh, popular ones right here. Okay. So, and if you look over on the right hand side, this is a piece that, that's different from like anything else. So, in the Forex, we trade and we look for capturing pips. And, and for the most part, all the currencies are kind of like you could trade a mini lot, a standard lot, a micro lot, whatever. Over on the right hand side, you see the margin needed. So, Type it to me if you can see at the very top, the ES, it, it's $6,600 to basically get into a trade. Do you guys see that? And then down at the bottom, the Euro dollar is like 165. And then that blue right there, it says dollars per tick. A tick is the smallest amount of movement that a chart can make. It's kind of like the equivalency of pips. Mul you know, several ticks equals a point. Why would I spend the time going over this? Because I find that sometimes people go, well, I can't play in that industry because it's too expensive. No, you could play smaller, start small, 
grow it over time. Like I'm going to show you why people like trading the ES. You go, well, it's $6,600. Now you're going to get that money back when you close out your trade, but let me just show you this real quick and I'll show you some quick little tools and we'll, we'll shift gears and my little crash course will be over. Let's say for example, that you're looking at this trade and, and you're a, you're a, you're a counter trend line trader and you say, okay, I see a little counter trend line right there. And you decided to make a buy trade and, and go up and you just, you got in right here. Uh, for argument's sake, I'm going to come over here and just let me turn some little crosshairs on. Uh, let's see, turn this guys on, turn the crosshair on. And this is at 2652. Okay. Write that down. 2652. And you held on to that trade, and for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten candles, let's just say you got out here, and maybe you didn't get out all the way up there, but you got out 2668. Okay, here, here's why. I'm going to show you why people like trading the ES, because that's a movement right there. And there are, again, there's calculators. You don't have to calculate this stuff. There's websites out there. You can access this stuff from anywhere in the world. Let me turn this guy off here, bring up the futures calculator. So you go, all right, well, I want to trade the ES. And all I need to know is like, when am I going to get in? So 26, excuse me, 2652. And I'm going bullish. And I'm going to find out my risk, my reward and all this other stuff. And I want to say, I'm looking to trade one contract. Now you can also do this to find your risk. But if I made that trade, okay, that was what, how many candlesticks did we say? Like eight? Calculate. Okay, it's going to calculate that up. Nope, oh, the website's frozen here, something like that. Oh, that's great. I love it. See, that's why I don't promote these websites. It's not my website. It's not anybody's website. It's just Daniel's trading for some reason. It's not working there. But let's just do some quick math here. It's uh, pretty simple. So you get, you get 2668 minus 2652. Okay, that's 16 points. Okay, that's $12.50 per. That's an $800 movement. It's an $800 movement. For some reason, the website's not working again. This is just somebody else's website. I just did a Google search, so that's not really what we're talking about. So the point behind this is $800 in about a three, four hour period of time is pretty significant. So that's, you know, and, and you, take, you take some leverage and you, and you can calculate the good risk and reward. And we're looking, we're going to be looking at like five to one reward to risk ratio. So anyway, that's, again, once you get there and you realize that just the money looks a little bit different, it's called something a little bit different, symbols are different than currencies it's the same stuff the reason why i take the time to explain that because as we shift gears now and we start going into looking at the data differently and looking at market footprints and looking at order flows all of that changes because we're not going to be doing trend line breaks we're not going to be doing actually you know what do me a favor go to the chat box and let me know type in like what are you guys currently yeah per number of contract Eloise what are you guys currently using to place your trades like just type some of them in like are you using trend lines and Fibonacci's and candlestick formations uh you know maybe you're using a scanner tool what, what are you guys currently using just give me some feedback let me know what's been working maybe what maybe you tried some things and it hasn't really worked or maybe you got great success off that okay so I'm seeing it like, and this is, this is pretty normal. I see like, you know, trend line breaks, support and resistance, Fibonacci's, uh, you got moving averages, again, candlestick formations, all this uh, price volume says Jerry, uh, somebody uses a scanner. Okay, so here's the thing. Oh, the calculator shows zero, Eloise. No, I just, the calculator wasn't working. It's somebody else's website. I just did a Google search for that. That's why, okay? So maybe I pushed the wrong button or something like that, but it was still $800. Okay, support and resistance. Here's the thing I want you guys to hear me loud and clear on. Everything that you've been using, I would say 90 to 95% of all the tools and methodologies that retail traders use are what's called, are based off of, or what's called lagging price indicators. And I want you to write that down if you haven't already. Lagging price indicators. Lagging price indicators are what's happened in the past, not what's happening now. And they're not bad, and if you're using them and you're getting good results from them, great. What I'm about to get into is not to say, hey, stop doing that and start doing this, 
It's to say, if you're doing that and you need to find better entry points, you need to take a look at this. If you're not doing that and you haven't found a way to find trade opportunities, you need to take a look at this because what we're going to look at is the data inside the candlestick. We're not going to be waiting for a candlestick to close out and then get another candlestick confirmation and get like 10 tips or 10 ticks behind all the other traders. We're not waiting for that. We're going to look and see what's happening now. We're going to hunt and stalk and see what the institutions are doing right now, and we're going to see it live. And, and it changes the game because now we make decisions based off of data and information, holistic information, not based off of a cute little system or a green or a red arrow or something that somebody made up at some point in time. It's real live raw data that everybody has access to. And all we've done is highlight areas in that, mar in the, in those, in that data that helps us to make decisions. And it's going to change the game when you really start to see it. Okay, so first of all, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of introduce some of you to what's called a market footprint. Some of you have seen stuff like this. Some of you have not. So let me move this guy up. I've got my little tabs down here at the bottom. Oh, where my tabs go? Uh, show tabs. There they are. Okay. So on the bottom here, I've got several tabs. And I'm going to click on the ES0319 OFST. So this is the order flow sequence tracker. And this is just simply called order flow. They call it a market footprint. A market footprint is what's going on inside the candle. Would you please type in a yes or me if you could see that this is a red candle, this is a green candle. Now, what we do when I, when I like to demo this, I like to make a much smaller camel six because I like it to, I, this is, you can use this on scalping, you can use this methodology or this data for day trading, swing trading, it doesn't matter. It's not really designed for position trading, but scalping, day trading, swinging, yeah, for sure. Well, what's, in, and I like to make a smaller time frame because usually when I do this live in the market, I like to have people see it move. I want, you, I want you to see what's happening live. I want you to see how things change based off the data. By the way, thank you, Alan and Kiran, Aaron, I appreciate that, Marshall, Richard, thanks for the responses. So there's numbers inside the camels, and those numbers represent the number of orders that are actually placed, like buy and sell orders, basically. On the left-hand side are, are orders placed at the bid price, and on the right-hand side are orders placed at the ask. Now, that might be totally a foreign concept to you, but those numbers, I'll, I'll say it a little bit differently to kind of give a little bit more uh, oomph to it. So let's just take this green candle. So this 0, 288, 134. We're going to rename these, Helen. We're going to name the left ones aggressive sellers. These are, these are aggressive sellers, the number of orders that are placed by aggressive sellers. You might want to write that down. And these are the orders placed by aggressive buyers. That aggressiveness component is what makes this work. Because if you think about it, and, I, and I'll, I'll give you a little example of what it means to like be aggressive or not aggressive. If you think about it, if, if our goal here is to watch and track and hunt and stock what the institutions are doing, if they make up 90% of the trades, and if they make up 90% of all these numbers in here, we can actually see live what they're doing. If there's a whole lot of orders, Usually, that's because there's an institution trading. If there's a pattern in the orders, usually that's because there's an institution trading. If the institutions know information that you and I don't, type it in me if it makes sense that if we can track what they're doing, we can follow what they're doing. Does that make sense? Okay. So let me give you an example of kind of what that looks like to be aggressive or passive. And because that's where, because that's, it's, it takes an aggressiveness to move the market. So I'll give you an example because even if you're not a, a proficient trader, this example will make a whole heck of a lot of sense. Let's just say you're out there, Vincent, and you're, buying, you're, you're selling your house. And you've got it listed, your ask price, for $400,000. And you get Bubba that comes along, Bubba the buyer. He's got a nice little tie on, and they look exactly the same way. <laughs> and he bids, he bids $300,000, Aaron. So imagine if he's there and he bids $300,000 and you know what, maybe he's saying like, I like your house, but I just don't like it that much. I'm going to bid 300 and hopefully maybe you, you come down to my, to my bid. Well, if that seller, if you're selling the, the house and you say, you know what, nah, 
I, I'm not really that eager to sell. I'm kind of, I'm kind of waiting for the market to come up to me. You have a passive seller. This is exactly the same. Let's go back into trading. This is like with your currencies or your futures or your stocks. How many of you by typing in a me have actually set up maybe a limit order or, or you, you put a line of resistance and you said, okay, if the market comes up to this level, then and only then will I look to short the market. Type it to me if you've done something like you've, you're waiting for the market to come to you. Does that make sense? All traders, if you've ever traded anything, that's a smart way to do things. You don't jump into it early. You wait for it to reach a certain level. Same thing here. Okay. So Mo, when, when you're a passive seller, you're waiting for the market to come to you and you're not making any moves. On the other hand, if that person that made the bid says, you know what, I'll wait too. He's not willing to come up to your level. You have a whole bunch of passive sellers and a whole bunch of passive buyers. What do you think is probably going to happen in the market? I mean, you guys are smart people. What do you think if you have a whole bunch of passive people on each side, what's probably going to happen? Yeah, nothing is the right answer. Yes, yeah, sideways movement. Um, you're talking about consolidation, ranging, however you want to say it, based off of what school of thought you're from will determine kind of how you explain things. So yeah, sideways movement, nothing happens, something like that. So that's, and you can actually see that. As a matter of fact, you could see that if we go back to the charts, you can see that where there's nothing happening on that chart we were just looking at. Not a whole lot. Now, what's going to happen is somebody somewhere is going to get some information. And since the, the institutions control 90% of the market, they have the information. So we're going to follow that information. So let's just say now you've got a seller here. And, on the, and the buyer over here, you're the seller and the buyer over here says, you know what? I'll pay your $400,000. Why would they be willing to pay? It? They know something that you don't know. Maybe they have a friend that owns a construction company and they know that that, that, that area that you live in is going to be developed out here in the next couple of years and the price of your house is going to go way up and, and now they're an investor and they're buying it at 400000 and they're going to sell it for 700000 That buyer has information that you don't have. The institutions have information that we don't have. And if we say deal because we wanted that 400000 that buyer is what's called an aggressive buyer. And what you and I are going to be doing is we're going to be watching when the aggressiveness of the institution starts to change. It gets less aggressive going in one direction and more aggressive going in another. We can start to identify momentum. We can identify exhaustion. We can even find out where there's trapped traders, where they can't get out of trades. This is all information to make decisions. Now, on the other hand, on the other hand, let's say you're selling your house for $300,000 and you got a buyer that comes along and he bids $300,000. Maybe you, because you're now the one with the information, you found out last week at the Homeowners Association meeting that they're going to build a jail across the street from your neighborhood. You're not excited about that. You know the value of your house is getting ready to go down, but it hasn't gone down yet. You're going to get rid of that thing as soon as possible. You're going to say, deal, you are an aggressive seller. Okay. I have a question for you. Does this make sense? Type in a yes. Does this make sense? Does this concept makes sense to you. Because this is gonna be important as we go throughout this, I want you guys to understand the basic concept of aggressiveness and what that looks like going forward. Good, all right, so Eloise has got it, Moe's got it, Tammy's got it, Jennifer's got it, great. Kiran, I got you, Jess, Donna, Julio, fantastic. Okay, now, Shukat, we're gonna, we're gonna jump back in the market and we're gonna actually apply this. We're gonna identify what that looks like, okay? So Aaron, I got you as well, thank you, cool. So. If I were to go back in and open up the charts, I'd say, well, how can I make decisions? Because I don't know, man. This looks like I, in order to see what's going on here, this looks like I have to be Neo, George, and I have to be in the matrix, and I have to be able to see and read all these numbers. There's no way the human can just watch this and find out all the things you need to find out. Now, you might be able to find out some basic data. I mean, you can look at this and say, okay, it's a little heavy down here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what we have here is, is, is the NOF team has – not only pulled the data, and this comes from your time and sales and your super dom, they pulled the data, put it into the footprint, but they've also overlaid it with a tool that they've created. I'm just using NinjaTrader. This is not a special tool, okay? I'm just using NinjaTrader with an overlay. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna break down the conditions that need to occur before we place a trade, okay? We're gonna break down those conditions that occur before we place the trade. So I want you guys to kind of follow me. You can write these down if you want to. 
Um, when we start doing this with you, we're going to do this with you live on a, on a weekly basis as often as you want to. And again, no matter what you're using currently, maybe you use a scanner to identify a place to start. Maybe you use a, you know, you got your traditional lagging indicators to kind of look for areas to trade, or maybe you don't do any of that. Doesn't matter. This is going to kind of help you get eight to 10 ticks ahead of all the other retail traders. So the first thing that I'm going to look for when I'm looking to potentially identify a trade is number one, is the current price of that currency of that stock of that futures contract of that exchange traded fund whatever is it currently overvalued or undervalued is it expensive or cheap well how, do, how would i know that well that's again because we've collected all the data we now have all the data we have all the history we have it all in there it compiles it and it creates what's called a value a value at price plot I'll turn it on over here. Uh, if you guys look over here at the top left, these are all the little turn on the indicators. They turn on and off. I'm just going to be clicking over here. I can't possibly go through them all. I'll go through some of the high level ones we did to place a trade. And then we use one to track trades. We use one to find risk management and so forth. So I'm going to see value at price plot. And when I turn this on, what it's going to do over here on the right hand side, it's going to give me some areas, some orange and blue areas. Here's what the orange and blue areas represent. If the market is down in the blue area, you are what's called it, the, 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 the currency or the futures contract is what's called it's, it's cheap. You want to be you're in the buy zone down here. If the current market is up here in this blue area up top, it's expensive. You're in the sell zone. However, if the market is down here in this orange salmon pink, whatever you want to call it area, I'll just call it orange for simplicity. If it's in this area, we are in the stay out zone. Now, I don't know about you, um, but I've traded quite a bit, but, and I would rather be out of a trade wishing that I were in than in a trade wishing that I were out. How many of you out there can give me a big old amen, hallelujah, preach it, yes, sir, or something like that. Like, I would rather be outside going, oh man, I totally knew that trade. I totally knew that stock was going to go up. I predicted it. I knew that and be talking like a big fish, right? Versus saying, oh, why did I do that? We've all done it, right? We've all done it. We've all been there. We've all felt that. And that's the pain sometimes of our emotional trading. Well, here, what we can do, and I don't care what you're looking at here, right? <laughs> so what we're doing here is we're saying, we're saying, okay, we have three zones Buy zone, sell zone, stay out zone. If it's in one of the blue areas, we'll look to make a trade. If it's not in one of those blue areas, we won't look to trade, make a trade. Again, swing trading, day trading, scalping, doesn't matter. So currently right now, if the market were live, we would say, no, nah, we're not going to make any loop. But however, down here, when the market dipped down, and this is actually a, a value at price. This is actually based off of one day. You can change that. There's actually dynamic settings where you can change it. You can make it do two hours, one hour, eight hours, 30 minutes, five days. That's up to you. But right now I have it set on as one day. Okay. So you have that set up and it's all on one chart. So you come down here and you go, all right, well, I'm in, I'm down here. I'm in the buy zone. Okay, good. That's great. That's, I mean, you can get that information anywhere. That's exactly right, Scott. Right. You can get that information anywhere. It's nothing special, but we're talking about having information, data to make decisions based off of all the data, not just lagging price indicators, okay, which that is. All right, well now I wanna also know, is the market near any what's called an institutional trade level? Institutional trade levels, if I were to go back to the chart and I go back to my candlesticks, institutional trade levels are these. These are your Fibonacci's. These are your support and resistance areas. These are your, your daily Fibonacci's. These are even areas that Troy has actually identified as places because he worked in the institution for over 10 years, places where they typically make moves, where they make reversals. It's areas where you're going to see movement. And if you analyze this, you can probably see that, right? So we want to know, well, what, what does that look like over on the order flow chart? Well, I could simply turn that on and I can Imp uh, superimpose it over here. I right? just overlay it on here and it turns it on. And the rule here as this turns it on is that I only want to place a trade if it was, if it's within like five to 10 ticks of one of those blue lines. If it's out here in the middle, 
we are going to stay away from the trade. Would you please type in a yes if you can see up here when it was blue up top, it was right on that blue line and was blue on the bottom. It was about six ticks away from that blue line when the red candlestick was heading down. This is so we will not place a trade. So what we're doing is we're anytime you place a trade, you want to have like four or five different levels of congruency or confluence, however you want to say it, four or five different conditions to make sure that it's right. So, okay, yes, I'm seeing, let's say I'm down here live. Okay, I'm seeing that it's looking good, but I'm going to look to potential. I'm not going to jump in yet, but so far, so good. Okay. Now, the third thing I want to find out though, is the commitment of traders in the correct zone? I'll explain what that means. So some of these terms are, some of these terms are actually terms that um, that the NOF team has put together, like institutional trade levels, they call them homework levels. Commitment of traders is where the most number of orders are placed within a candle. So let me zoom in here. So this is the third condition. And again, it's just a step-by-step -step process to identify an opportunity. So if I see these red candlesticks coming down, I've looked at my value price, I've looked at my blue line here, and I'm, and I'm looking at this red candle, let's just say I'm live here. Well, I wanna know, is the commitment of traders in the lower half of the candle? What is a commitment of traders? The commitment of traders is where the most number of orders are actually placed in the candlestick. So now if you had an amazing eye, you could pick up on it, sure, but we wanna be able to allow the tool to come in and tell us, why is that important? Why would I want the most number of orders to be placed in the bottom half of a candle before going long or the top half before going short. Can anybody take a guess? Why would I want the most number of orders being placed in the bottom half of the candle? I'll turn this on right here real quick. So I'm gonna turn on what's called commitment of trader. Yep, because what it basically tells you, those gray areas that are popping up, that's the level where the most number of orders are placed. Here's what it tells you. On a red candlestick that's going down, a damn down candlestick, and it's looking to reverse, I want to know that when the candlestick closes out, was there more action going on around that close out of that candlestick, letting me know that anything I look at is going to be more relevant, more relevant. It's, it's recent. There's more going on down there because if this gray bar was up here, that would mean there'd be more going down up here and it's not, it's not solid data. Again, we're not just looking at lagging price indicators. We're looking at data. We're looking at holistic information, making decisions, okay? That's right, Aaron says that's where the smart money is. So, so far, so good. And again, this is just what happened yesterday at like 3.30 in the afternoon. This is, you know, this is live, not, it's not moving live because the markets are closed, but it's just, this is not something that we looked at five years ago. Well, let's go look at the top here. Let's go look at the top and see how that was up here. All right, so example, when the market came up, okay? in this green candlestick, okay, it's close. You know what, I would say probably too close to that orange area right there. We probably wanna take a double look at that because this is a red candlestick and it might not, like things aren't quite lining up. So again, I'd rather stay out than wishing that I were out. Okay, so once I determine that, okay, good. And again, it's a step-by-step, -step. we'll do this with you every single week. Third thing I wanna do is I wanna look for sequential decline. Okay, sequential decline. A sequential decline is our aggressiveness indicator. And I'm gonna turn them on. I want you guys to see them all. A sequential decline, let me go over here. This is called dynamic reversal alert. Now again, we can do exhaustion alerts. Um, we could do deltas. We could do trap traders and everything like this. But I'm just gonna turn on dynamic reversal alert. And when I do this, you're gonna see a bunch of green and red pop up in a second here. These green and red, if I were to zoom in down here, I want you guys to be able to see this here. Um, hopefully you can see the numbers. Type in to me if you could see that as the market's heading down here, right? This, there's, this order is on the, again, this is the aggressive sellers. There's 2688, then 1575, right? And then 1343, and then 865, right? Is now, and now 327. And actually, Scott, this is not even an algorithm. Right. This is in the this is the algorithm is to determine what's actually happening. This is raw data. This is not a just a predictive algorithm. This is actually what happened, and it's highlighting what's actually happening so that we can make decisions. Because remember, aggressiveness. So if you look at the left hand side, and you and we said earlier that this left hand side represents the aggressive sellers. Does it make sense that since the aggressive sellers are slowly declining sequentially? that it might be a good reason 
that the market might be reversing to head back up. Does that make sense? The aggressiveness, this is why that piece earlier was so important. The aggressiveness of the sellers is, sequ is sequentially declining. It's getting less aggressive and less aggressive and less aggressive and less aggressive for about five or six ticks. This is our entry point, folks. This is where we're, we're not going to wait till the next candlestick to confirm it because that's what gets us behind trades. That's what gets us five to seven ticks behind all the other traders out there because everybody else is going to wait for this green candlestick to finish up and you're already out, right? You already, you've already lost off of like 10 different, 10 ticks here. So the point is, as soon as this candlestick closes and you got that confirmation, you have all four of those things, assuming, of course, we want to look at risk to reward, assuming that we have good risk reward. Well, what would our risk reward look like? Well, what we tell people is a five to one reward to risk, risk to reward ratio, or sorry, five to one reward to risk ratio is really something that we want. We want high reward, low risk. So we'll set a stop loss, typically about six, seven ticks below that candle. And then what we'll do is we'll use these blue lines, okay? We'll use these blue lines to lock in profit meaning we'll move our stop losses up. Now we're just doing the scalping, which is obviously move a little bit faster, but day trading and, and swing trading is a little bit different. And then we'll move it up and we'll move it up and we'll move it up. Let me get this all the way to the live market. Oh, one second there, get this guy up. Okay, so obviously it hasn't gone much since then, but with come, come Monday, it's gonna start picking up again. But you sit there and you move it up and you lock in profit and you lock in profit and you lock in profit and you lock in profit. Right? Yes. Yes, it's volume at price indicator, my friend. Uh, Ashko, it's, it's volume at price. So we've now, and why would I want to have such small risk? Here's why. Because listen to me, when you're using the data, again, it's data, it's not indicators. When you're using the data to make decisions, if the data is a false indicator, you are going to know right away. And so you're going to get taken out early. You're going to take some losses as part of the game. If anybody ever tells you, hey, take these trades, you'll never lose. You'll never lose. That's silly. I couldn't say that. That would be lying to your teeth. But if you're looking at 70, 80% accuracy on your trades now, and you're using your Fibonacci's or your support and resistance or your scanners or whatever you're using, and you're just adding this onto it, it starts making a lot of difference because you're starting to get into trades earlier. And on top of that, you're managing the trades a little bit better because once we're in, now we can actually manage a trade by watching those imbalance alerts. We can put on more indicators on the chart and watch and anticipate what might happen so that we could just take a quick look at the screen, say, okay, I see some imbalance alerts. I might be looking to get out soon or, okay, I see imbalance alerts. I might be looking to get in soon. And I'll just turn those guys on. Again, I don't expect for you to be able to memorize all this right now and understand it all. The thing that I want you to get is like, okay, is it making sense that we're not looking at indicators? Yes, we've identified where the things happen, but we're looking at data live and making decisions based off of data live, not what's happened 30 minutes ago or an hour ago. Does that make sense? And these little blue and red numbers in here, they represent the imbalance of the market. Like for instance, this 355, that means that there's, when it's blue, that means there's at least three times more buyers, aggressive buyers, than there are aggressive sellers. Three times more aggressive buyers than sellers. What it says is the buyers are in control. And as long as you have more blue, then you have more red, you stay in. Or on this downtrend right here, if there was more red than there was blue, and then red, 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 that's a good signal right there. You might want to start paying attention. Again, I don't have time to go through all the details of everything, but the point is, and you know, when we look at this and you guys start to, ch you know, check this out, the, the whole program is, there's guarantees with it, you know, there's money back guarantees. So you have to worry about like, hey, is this going to work for me? I'm going to, you know mortgage my house to do this. You can look at the DAT NASDAQ and do the same thing. You guys, those of you who said you're trading crude oil earlier, fantastic. Use the same thing on crude oil. You can use it on treasury notes. You can use it on anything. It's just, it's data. It doesn't matter. And you can go do it on your Forex charts. You can go do it on, and use it for stocks and everything like that. It's the same things over and over again. We're just simply making decisions based off of data. And you get guys like, you know, and as you can, see, you can see, kind of see how simple it is, because once you know the sequencing, once you know the steps, you do it over and over and over and over again. It becomes kind of more second nature. You get more confident. And as you start to go through the program and you start to evaluate whether it's actually going to work for you, regardless of whether you're going to triple your profits in a week, that's not the point. 
the question you have to ask is, are people doing well? Are they happy? I know some of you already read some of these, right? Like guys like Michael, he says they're not indicators. They're market transparency tools. So they fit into everybody's trading style. That's what we talked about earlier. In fact, I like this. He says you just slap on the, o the Pringle slogan because once you OFST, you can't stop. Previous to owning the IES, my risk or stops were the standard 15 to 20 ticks, which is a huge amount of risk, but now it's been easily reduced to five to seven ticks. Why? Because he'll know immediately. And the ebbs and flows of the market make sense. There's no more guessing games. There's no more guesswork. It's like you say, oh, I know why that happened. That makes sense. So, uh, you know, and so with all the, the, the tools and everything, and again, I don't have time to go through all the details and I could throw multiple things. Let me ask you a question. If you had all these tools, I just demonstrated at your disposal, and, and I could teach you, or better yet, the NOF team could teach you a skill set where you could take, let's just say, a couple thousand dollar investment for trade and make several thousand dollars month after month after month for the remainder of your life. Listen to me closely. Would you allow the NOF team to train you, coach you, mentor you, train you, coach you, mentor, give you all the tools? All the software lets you work live with them, lets you trade live with them, and even provides you a guarantee on top of that, yes or no. L let me rephrase that. If there were a guarantee that gave you a peace of mind, oh, hey, I can try this. If I don't like it, I get my money back or something. Would you be willing to give this 10% of your trust and let us earn the other 90? Yes or no. That's, that's a better question to ask. Let us earn the other 90 because that's, that's business. You know, it's all the way it works. You know, no companies. If anybody ever says, hey, we won't give you some kind of a guarantee, run away. You know, it's, 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 there's gimmicky stuff out there left and right, right? So, Johnny, I've got your response. Uh, Suzanne, I got you. Jennifer, I got you. Tina, Aaron, I got you. Eloise, Mo. So, at the core of the program is an entire training program to teach you all the fundamentals, no matter what level you start at. Like, Sheree, I saw you earlier. You're brand new. Well, you want to know how the markets work, but all the way up to advanced people that are making tens of thousands of dollars a month. That's access for the remainder of your life. So, they'll teach you that. They'll have access to it. You're a lifetime client once you're a student. There's no monthly charges. There's no subscriptions or anything like that. There's no upgrade fees, any of that sort of stuff. So you have access to that. Included in the program is also weekly live trading webinars. You're going to be working with Troy personally. He's going to be doing live sessions. He does that every single week. You can ask him questions. You can do it alongside with him. And then also they provide a tech, a tech team where every week they do two weekly webinars where they're going to talk about, well, maybe you wanted to set this up to do more swing trading. You want to maybe talk more about the technology side about what it looks like to do swing trading. How am I going to set up the software differently? I have questions on how to use the software. You do all that live. They do that live twice a week. George, I got your response. And by the way, Nancy, I have your phone number. I, I didn't really ask for that yet. If you have questions you want to get answered, feel free to type in a phone number. I'll have somebody reach out to you as soon as we're done here. They provide the software and they provide free upgrades for life. I don't know about you, um, but I've actually, how many of you out there by typing into me have actually bought a piece of software? Let's just say you spend a thousand dollars on it and it worked great for four, five, six months. And then suddenly it stopped working in order for you to get the upgrade though, you have to pay $300 or $500 or something like that. How many of you type into me if that's happened to you? That's very, very rampant in this, in this industry. Yeah. Well, here they're saying once you're enrolled, you have access to it for the remainder of your life. All the upgrades, if they add any additional indicators, any tools, it's all there. They provide a 40-day blueprint, so it's a step-by-step walkthrough, so you know exactly what to do for the first 40 days, the most profitable path. They do daily brief emails, okay? Daily brief emails where they send you an email every single day saying, here's some target signals. Here's what you might want to be looking at. Here's what just happened in the market. So they're walking with you. And, and the thing that I love, this is actually only for this webinar expo. They're actually giving with enrollment. They're giving it uh, six months for free of their advanced mentorship group. Their advanced mentorship group is like a, it's like kind of a bonus. So, so for six months, you're going to be working. You have the opportunity, meaning you don't have to attend every day, but you have five days a week live. Two of them are technical analysis, three days of trading with Troy and his team. So that's, a, that's an extra that they're putting into this program because usually that's not something that's available. They'll do that for like 30 days. You guys get six months. And I know at this point in time, a lot of you have already decided that this program is exactly what you need. Many of you have typed in your phone numbers. And by the way, I have Graham's phone number. I have George as well. Some of you have questions. And I think questions are great. Uh, things like, okay, well, what does it take to do this? How does it work on the 4X? Great. Here's the beautiful thing about the program. 
The NOF team is so confident that you'll be able to understand, implement, and profit from the methodology that they will let you use the entire program for the next two weeks 100% risk-free. That way, you don't have to sit here in a webinar expo and take my word for it. You decide. You decide to attend all the classes, all the live events. You decide whether it's right for you because honestly, at the end of the day, the only person you really trust is yourself. All we ask is that you give us an honest effort. Is that fair enough? Okay, cool. So I've got a um, – so no, if you guys are in different parts of the world, it's, it's the same program. Um, you don't have to worry about being in different parts of the world. I, I want to kind of let you guys know there's a webinar expo special. And again, if you guys end up having interest in this, this is not something you're locking into right away. But it's an $8,400 program. On the website, I can actually go to the website. If you were to go to the website and go look it up, um, you can go through the whole details, all the stuff we just talked about. It's a $6,700 program, okay, right there. You have lifetime access, all of that. Other webinars, it might be like $3,000, but today what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow everybody who's in the webinar, in this webinar expo, if you're live here right now, not people that registered and didn't get access to it, I'm going to give all of you an opportunity to come on board 100% risk-free for only $1,497. And that is nearly a $5,000 discount. It's only for the webinar expo and only for today. So it's very, very easy to get started, or if you have any questions whatsoever, it's not committing you to anything. What it's going to do, what I want you to do is put your telephone number into the question box. What I'll do is I'll have an educational specialist reach out to you, spend as much time as necessary, make sure all your questions are answered, make sure you're confident, make sure you're comfortable, and then folks, you're off to the races. The only problem you'll have is that you didn't see this session six months ago and get started back then. Actually, you're in a little bit of a better situation. Even other sessions that they've done through the NOF team specifically, it's a $3,000 program with only 30 days of AMG. And this is only for today. So if you guys have any questions, type your phone number in. I've got Eloise, I got Aaron, I got Vincent, Julia, um, Catherine. And if you are typing in your phone number, if you, if you say, well, I, I'm not sure this is right for me yet, don't worry. We'll get some questions answered. Make sure it's right. If it's not, we're not going to enroll you. Tina, I've got you. Uh, Andrew, I got your phone number. Charles, I got you as well. Okay, now, again, we get six months of the advanced mentorship group for free. That's a $1,200, right? We're also offering, if you would like to use this for Forex, Kiran, anybody that would like to use it for Forex, yes, it does work. So I'll put a little message out to the chat box. So you can definitely go in there, type in the word Forex, and what we'll do is we'll have somebody, because it's actually called the Forex Alpha Program, same thing, but you're going to be working with Forex traders and not just futures traders, okay? So make sure you have your phone number, though, but type in the word Forex with that, and I'll make sure we get that access to you, okay? Uh, okay. Hey, that's a great, great question, Ash. Asho, type in a phone number. Asho actually has the Forex Alpha and wants, okay, Eloise wants both. Just type in both. That's fine. Um, but if you have any questions about, you know, hey, you want to buy both? Is there an additional discount? Yes. Um, I have one already. I want the other one. Is there an additional discount? Yes. Uh, Daniel, I've got your phone number. Michelle, I've got your phone number. And again, just get some questions answered. Talk to a real person. See if it makes sense for you. So I'm going to kind of wind things down. Usually I like to go over a little bit more detail. But, but ultimately, here's, here's the thing. Uh, John, I've got your number. Thank you. Um, if you're looking, if you're a futures, stocks, ETF trader, Forex, day trader, scalper, swing trader, if you're serious about becoming a profitable trader or if you already are looking to get better, type your phone number in. Let's have a conversation, see if it makes sense. You're looking to scale up your, your trading business. Here is the thing I want you all to know, though. If you're looking to get rich quick, if you're not willing to do some work, if you're not willing to follow some guidance, this is not a magic button. This is going to take understanding it. Okay, it's going to take some time. It's going to take some work. We're going to work with you. We're going to have six months. You have every day if you want to for six months. So you have access to that. Okay? So you want to get your questions answered. That's fine. I would normally spend some time going over some additional details of this. This is all stuff that we can talk about on the phone. Hey, what does it mean? What are the weekly webinars? What's in them? You know, what, what all pieces are part of the software? By the way, Graham, I've got, I'm sorry, Mo, I've got your phone number. Gary, I have your phone number. Uh, what platforms? Uh, Graham, we're talking like Ninja Trader, TradeStation, so on and so forth. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of wind it down. For those who are still thinking about typing in a phone number, let me ask this question. 
Does the idea make sense to you? Like, does the idea make sense? Yeah, because the beautiful thing about the entire program is that you have everything you need to learn how to trade the market successfully and get an edge on 90% of the trades out there. Believe me, if I'm even half right, let, let's just say that I'm in here and I'm just, I got in for an hour here and I'm a hype man and get you all excited. If I'm half right and I made up half what I just told you, you're going to be very impressed because if I'm wrong, it costs you nothing. It's a hundred percent money back guarantee. They say, Hey, if you don't like it, if you go for a couple of weeks, you're smart people. You'll figure that out very, very quickly. But if I'm right, if I'm right, imagine the possibility. So we're going to hold your hand every step of the way ensuring you maximize your potential. There's so much upside and very little downside for giving this a two-week test drive. I said it before, look, if you, can't, if you can't gain an edge using this data, you're not gonna be able to gain an edge from anybody. So I'm gonna wind down the webinar now and I'm gonna close out my session of this. I know it went fast. I know some of you are a little bit more new to this. I have less than an hour or something that takes a little bit longer to normally do. Uh, but my session is done. If you guys would like to call in for the next 30 minutes, that special will be available. There's a number listed over there on the side of the screen. Um, I enjoyed chatting with you guys.